Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rachakwadash, which is to say the name of the Heavenly Father, in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in the ancient Hebrew tongue. I also want to give double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, the top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. And I also want to give out a hearty shalom uh, to all the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the earth that push the unadulterated truth of the Bible and risk their lives doing so in efforts to waking up the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. This is your brother Karab from the Great Millstone, Miami, coming back at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemal Shai. And Lord willing, this is edifying, okay? Now, uh, what I want to go into in this uh, lesson is uh, the fact that when you, you know, you know, sit back and look at um, what is being played out through uh, the, the, the Heavenly Father's characters, okay, and mainly uh, through the nation of Israel, the elect of the nation of Israel, okay, the Heavenly Father is basically, um, you know, uh, molding us to have a testimony, okay, or, uh, uh, you know, making us testimonies, okay, and ultimately is to what? Is to the glorification of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, you see, okay, but through the glorification of him, he's going to make, you know, his elect of the nation of Israel a testimony, okay, and when you, when you understand that, and knowing that you've been called into this ministry, that is very humbling, okay, and it should put uh, a, a, a type of emphasis on your, on your drive, to to want to return the, the favor, which you can't. You know the scriptures tell us that we can't. We can never go far enough. Okay, but your mindset uh, uh, should be, you know, f uh, forever thankful, man. Okay, because you know, growing in this faith, you you learn and see that um, you know everybody can't get this. They just can't. You know, and uh, that's the way the heavenly Father set it up, so that uh, understanding that we have this and we. Uh, the Heavenly Father, you know, called us into this ministry and Lord willing will keep us into the end, then we ought to be extremely thankful, okay? But the mindset is that, look, let's be a testimony, you know? Um, I know brothers say it all the time, and I myself specifically, you know, I, I want to hear every brother's testimony from, you know, f from what, what they went through in the world before they came into the truth, you know, once they came into the truth, and that testimony doesn't stop there, you know. One, one, hey, Lord willing with those men, okay, when things get crazy and the Lord has to pour out spiritual powers and our brothers have to do healing and food having to, you know, uh, uh, manifest, okay, all the way up until we're delivered on chariots, man, okay. And yet the testimony still doesn't stop, okay, because then we have to test a testimony of how the kingdom of heaven is. So it's, it's, just, it's just all good, man. Okay, Lord willing, we're a part of that elect, okay? But it begins with having that mindset that the Lord wants us to be a testimony which stands to the glorification of him, okay? But uh, we'll start with our uh, Sirach or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, verse 1. It says, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation, okay? And just put plainly, brothers, we have to look at that as something like, okay, if you come to serve the Lord, which means you're a servant of the Lord, and ultimately you're going to seek salvation. So by you receiving those temptations, that is the Lord building you up to be able to deal with the temptations. OK, ultimately that are going to come at the times of the end. And we're going to read that. It says, my son, if thou uh, come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright, meaning uh, get your mind in these scriptures, make it repetitive, okay? And not only read it and, you know, understand it, but actually do it and apply it to your life. It says, set thy heart aright and constantly and, in, and constantly endure. And it says, and make not haste in time of trouble, okay? So the Lord is basically giving you the rundown, okay? The, the, the scriptures are telling you, what it takes to, to be a servant of Yahweh by Shem Shah. Okay? And through all of those things, you'll become what? A testimony. Okay? But here it is. We're getting the blueprint on how to deal with certain things because you're going to be tried. Okay? Why? Because ultimately, Lord willing, you, you make it until the end. You're of the Lord's elect. 
Okay, so what type of man is the Most High going to mold to be of his elect? Okay, to be of his governing body of the first fruits. You see? It says, um, it says, set thy heart, verse 2 again, set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Verse 3, cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Okay? And that's what it boils down to. So basically, we, you, uh, uh, Sirach, the second chapter, verse 1 through 4, gives you a crash course on how to, to walk in this ministry, man. Okay? And ultimately, we're walking in this ministry to receive salvation so that we can be a testimony, man. Okay? And that should be our mindsets. You know, let's continue to be that testimony of Yahweh about Shimei Shah. Okay? Which is ultimately, like I said earlier, to the glorification of Yahweh by Shimei Okay, this is, um, this is Revelations. Uh, I believe it's 14. Revelations 14. Let me see. Yeah, uh, Revelations uh, uh, 14 and 1, it says, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his, it's like having his father's name written in their foreheads. Okay, and this is speaking of the elect of the nation of Israel, and that lamb is Yahweh Shai. Verse 2, And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their with their harps, and they sang as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth, okay? Speaking about that hopefully let. And what is that song? The the proper true understanding of these scriptures, okay? Which the Lord has given us. Verse 4, it says, "These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth." Okay? And that speaking about virgins does not mean sexually. OK, it means uh, dealing with these other philosophies and these other beliefs and religions. OK, and ultimately undefiled. OK, and that's speaking about spiritual fornication. You see, it says. Um, it says, these are they. Which father the lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto the most high and to the lamb. Verse five, and in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of the most high. You see? Okay, and this is uh, you know, basically John the Revelator uh ascribing this. Uh, you know. Uh, around about 90 something AD. Okay? And guess what? The manifestation of this, what uh, John the Revelator wrote, is happening right now. Okay? And that's some, a part of the, 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 the good news. Okay? That ultimately, yeah, it's called for us to, to walk in the, in the spirit and walk in the, uh, you know, the paths of the ancient renowned men of the scriptures. Okay? But ultimately, it's the Lord, you know? And that's why I keep using that all, all to the glorification of Yahweh by Shemel Shah. That's everything. Everything we're doing is to magnify the Heavenly Father and His Son. Okay? And, and, and through doing those deeds, the Lord will give us glory. You see? But ultimately, it, it, what we're led with, what we're moved with, is obviously the love and the fear of Yahweh by Shemel Shah. Okay? But also understanding this is our reasonable service. This is what you should be doing as an Israelite man, okay, in one form or fashion, whether it's whether it's, it's preaching, whether it's being a help, okay, whether it's raising your family uh, or, or, or 
you know, training your children up and, uh, you know, making our customs and our, our law and this faith a part of your household in whatever fashion you can help this ministry. OK, that's what you ought to be doing, you know. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it on that. Let's get another one. This is. Um, what did I want? Up Colossians. Three and we'll start at eight. This is Colossians three and eight. And it reads, it says, but now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. OK, and now, you know, the scriptures constantly give us, you know, uh, tools and the do's and don'ts of, of walking in this ministry. OK, and, and what's the reason that the Lord has given us instructions on how to do this? OK, because like I've been saying, ultimately, he wants to uh, uh, make a testimony out of us, man. OK, because we all have a story. We come from a certain place, uh, a certain place in life that was contrary to this this faith. OK. And as we grow and as we walk in this ministry, we get more and more adept to the scriptures that show us how to walk and how to uh, uh, carry ourselves as men of the Lord. OK. Uh, verse eight, it says, but now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Verse nine, lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with the deeds. OK, so this thing is all about reproof and correction, man. And, you know, being that 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 that, that sacrifice that Yahweh by Shimei Abishai is looking for. OK. Being that uh, 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 ch uh, chaste virgin, like the scriptures speak about, verse 10, it says, And have put on the new man, which is renewed in the knowledge after the image of him. It says, uh, after the image of him that created him. Verse 11, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, Barbarian, Scythian, uh, bond, nor free, but Hamashiach is all and in, in all. Verse 12, and here's the point. It says, put on, therefore, as the elect of the Most High, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long suffering. Okay? So it's not like we just got to figure this thing out and you know, just wing it. Nah, it's written. Okay? And these how the renowned men of the scriptures live. And these are the things that they live by. Because what is being conveyed here is things that were written in the Old Testament. Okay? The way how to walk in his ministry. Okay? Now, obviously, Yahweh Shah came, you know, bringing the gospel, the New Testament. Okay? Or the New Testimony. You know, and there were certain things that, that men couldn't understand. Like, you know, the veil... Uh, uh, the reading of the law and the veil over the face of Moses, which was, you know, over the face of the people who couldn't believe in Yahweh Shai. Okay? But for the most part, all of those uh, uh, mannerisms and attributes that a man of God should have, they're getting it from the Old Testament. You see, that's the example. Like it says in Romans, the 15th chapter, for a verse, all things were written for a time. All things written for a time were written for our learning. You see? It says, uh, verse 12 again, put on, therefore, as the elect of the most high, holy and beloved, bowels of meekness, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness and long suffering. OK, and that's ultimately what being of the elect begins with. It begins with character building in a certain way you carry yourself, because uh, a big part of what you're, you're, you're uh, the most high is watching is how you deal with his servants how you deal with other men that are in this ministry and your reverence towards them as men of the most high. Okay. And then ultimately how to teach this word, you know, like apostle Paul said, he became all things that he may gain all men. So there's certain ways that you have to, you know, humble yourself and, and hey, like Yahweh Shah said, I see you out as a sheep among wolves, you know, therefore you be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. 
So they're showing you the mindset that a man of God has to have, okay? Especially being set up as an example for the people, okay? Let's get one more and we'll close it out. This is um, it's Philippians chapter 1. And um, I started 3. Yeah, it says, I thank my power upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with joy. Verse 5, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Verse 6, it says, being confident of this very thing, that he which have begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Even as it is meet uh, for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart and as much as both in my bonds and in the defense and the confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. Okay. But the key point is in verse six, where it says being confident of this very thing. You see that he uh, he which which have begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Okay, now the vibration of this lesson was be be a testimony. You know, continue to walk in the spirit, continue to fight these battles in your mind and your mental. Okay, continue to be a brother. Okay, so that ultimately you can be that that testimony that you know every every righteous man would want to see uh, would want to tell. Okay. That we went through hell, you were a part of this world, you woke up, the Lord pulled you out of this world, put you in this ministry, uh, 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 watered you, built you up in the spirit, and then ultimately you were beamed up on the chariot, man. Okay? But the key, the, the biggest uh, a comfort, you know, of understanding that process is that ultimately the most high is the one that's working this. Okay? And consider yourself blessed and act as such. You know, easier said than done because we go through hell and we have trials and tribulations. But that should be the mindset constantly. It says for your fellowship, verse five again, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Verse six, being confident of this very thing that he which have begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. OK, and if you really believe that because it's in the scripture, so you should. You know, and your mind is set and stabilized on that. It's nothing that can pull you away from this ministry, man. Why? Because we wholeheartedly believe that. Okay. And the scripture said plainly, he that endureth until the end, the same shall be saved. Okay. See, your brothers, that's the mindset. Let's be a testimony. Let's glorify you. How about Shemal Shah and show and, and tell what he did for us individually for us to be delivered. Okay. So um, I believe I hit the point of Lord willingness edifying. With that, I say shalom.